lot of people that flip, that are very experienced flippers like myself, we can't find the product. What's the benefit of being liquidity poor, but asset rich? This is how you make money in real estate. That's right, that's how you make money in real estate. Oh, I would have never thought of that. But if, if, if I'm not going to get into flips yeah. and I want to be a part of the real estate game, what are you saying I should do? You should diversify. Okay. So um, the market changes all the time as we see things, you know, uh, the market is, it's a high market. Mm -hmm. um, the rates are high. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people that flip, that are very experienced flippers like myself, we can't find the product in order to have that margin on the flip side. Okay. Um, you need to understand that, that you know, market. So, so you're it saying- It depends on where you're flipping, right. obviously, and it depends on what you're doing, but I'm saying get educated and figure out. So that's a great, that's a great thing. So first you said you make your money on the buy. Yeah. And then you're also saying that you, as a professional and serial flipper, are having trouble finding the right product today because right. the market's a mess. Okay, right. so that's your main reason for not flipping. But then my my next question is the fact that you are educated from Fordham, have your MBA, was that an instrumental part in you being successful in flipping, or would you have been able to do that without the education? No, um, I would say it is an instrumental uh, part because a lot of things that I'm seeing now. I'm able to diversify and pivot, and I'm able to think on a, on a larger scale when I'm stuck. And that's what happens when people purchase a house mm -hmm. and they're stuck with construction, mm -hmm. and they don't have money mm -hmm. to continue. Correct. There are different ways of making money in real estate. Like? Not just flipping. Okay, give it to us. Okay, so. List them out. <laughs> The one thing that I do believe in is real estate. I don't even have a 401k. Okay. I believe in real estate wholeheartedly. I understand that you'll, you'll make your return. I don't even have any faith in social security anymore. Mm -hmm. wow. I don't think that people that are like buying into thing. social security, it's, it's a big thing. I mean, I, I believe in real estate because okay. I know that at least when you're buying, there's not a lot of risk. Okay. And why? Why is there not a lot of, because everybody that purchases real estate and is not educated, they think one thing, flip, mm -hmm. maybe just flip or mm -hmm. rent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There are different ways of doing it. I mean, you can buy the house and you can live in the property. House hacking. Mm -hmm. You can do room share, which I do. Mm -hmm. But not in the house you live in, you don't do that. You can. But you don't. I don't, but okay. I'm saying you can. Okay. You know, if there's a 23-year-old who can't afford a two-family now because the two families are, are really priced high, mm -hmm. you know, he could buy a single-family home in a three-bedroom house and Okay, so for the, like a the, guy with a, with a house, he can bring three or four of his friends in and share the rooms. Space. Makes sense, mm -hmm. yes. Make use of your space, your square footage. You're right next to the city. There's a lot of square footage that's, that could be utilized. There's a garage. Rent the garage mm -hmm. for storage. What I'm hearing actually, and tell me if I'm wrong, is that you're saying what Eric loves is you can do added value to mm -hmm. things, which right. is Eric's bread and butter. Right. Um, but do you think that people shouldn't buy and hold, like rent out? Actually, I'm a believer in buying and holding. Yeah, he's saying he's not a to believer in buying and holding. Yeah. I, okay. am, I am the buying and holding, I mean, my financial advisor, and I could. He, he'll probably watch this and say like, oh my God, like he's always telling me, well, you gotta, it's you have to liquidate something, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because I, I have too much money into properties. Mm -hmm. I have, I'm asset rich, liquid poor, mm -hmm. you know, people are like seeing everything that I'm doing and they're like, wow, this guy has money. No, I don't have money. I'm on, I have assets. Mm -hmm. I have properties, which I'm, you know, you worked hard for, I worked hard yeah. for, but, uh, the liquidity is, it's not easy to take the equity out of the properties now. So the goal is to create a balance between having the money in the bank to pay for your trip to Florida right. versus buying a house a week and just locking up all your available cash. Right. Got it. And I would say wear more hats. Yeah. I mean, if you really want to be in the real estate game, it's not easy. You have to hustle and you have to work hard just like you do any other, you know, 
Mm-hmm. Um, so would industry. you say start with getting your real estate license, do some transactions for others, and then work your way into Absolutely. it? Um, start making f- friends who are going to um, influence you and who are going to help you learn and who are better than you mm. and who know more than you. I mean, the friends that just are, are weighing you down, that's like a, that's a non-refundable thing, you know? Is there yeah. any benefit to being asset rich? If you have a, <laughs> if you have a wife that has a We're job ta- that's bringing lots of cash, <laughs> then yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So then the answer is, is no. Is there a benefit? Uh, there, yeah. What, um, what's the benefit of being liquidity poor, but asset rich? Um, you know what? I'm 36. You're young. You're a baby. Young. Um, and I still, I still have some juice where I could, I know I want to hustle and work hard mm-hmm. and, um, and I know that the money will come. So I'm okay with being asset rich, liquid poor at the moment, because I think maybe in about 10 or 20 years, 10 or 20 years. 10 mm-hmm. or 20 years? What's going to happen? You're going to be a billionaire in 10 or 20 years. Well, I, it, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I think you could do it. I think we could do it. Yeah. I think I mean, it's really about the cash flow. Yeah. Okay. Balancing out your cash flow every I think, month. And it, I think it's leverage. I mean, I'm at the f- stage in life where I'm hustling and I'm still learning and, and I'm working hard. Mm-hmm. But I, there's these, like, th- these phases in life where th- if I get to this next phase, now I can leverage. And when I leverage, that's where the real money is. Got it. And you're not doing that through flips? No. Okay. No. So you're doing the it? flips are there to create liquidity. And sometimes my biggest regret mm-hmm. was selling properties as an agent, mm-hmm. brokering them to other people and not buying them myself. Mm. But that's how you made money. I know. But I, I just hated it because I saw this great deal and mm-hmm. I gave it to my client. But you can't do every deal. I can't. There's enough deals out there for people. Absolutely. Maybe not today in today's market, but absolutely, you can't do everything. No. That's why a lot of people are thinkers, and they mm-hmm. think too much, and they wait on it, and they're like mm-hmm. not making a decision. Mm-hmm. So we always talk about you got to be in it to win it. I mean, if you're waiting on a decision, stop. Stop thinking about it. Yeah. Just do it. I mean, this is why I'm in this position is because I actually didn't really think about it. Will yes. you break down for us your diversification? Yes. So I'm a general contractor. Okay. And so that's one. I one was stream. Yeah, I was right. put into that position because of my situation that happened with this house that I owned. Correct. And I was finishing the basement, and then the town came in and busted me and said, "What are you doing without permits?" Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I was freaking out. You're I like, mean, "What's a permit?" <laughs> I mean, let me tell you, the you most didn't even know. Yeah, right? Yeah. Who's a kid? You you want to flip? Ask your parents if if you're younger and your mm-hmm. parents have done construction mm-hmm. or renovation. Ask them how stressful was it when you did your kitchen renovation? Sure. Oh god. Right? Yeah. Or how stressful was it when you did your bathroom renovation? And you want to flip? Okay. Like but you're not get, living in your. But exactly. I was just thinking Understood. that you're not Understood. living there. But it's, 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 it's that stressful when you don't know. Mm-hmm. And guess what? All the contracts are, the contractors are not going to tell you. Yeah. Not for free. Well, I think you had said yeah. that one of your biggest mess ups or was trusting the contractors. You can't trust yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, I'm a contractor, no. but I trust. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I trust you. I trust you too. <laughs> I think it depends. I think there are there are good contractors and there are bad contractors. There, there's there's hard business. to find. There are. It's true. There's there's a class A. There's class B, class C, and um, I think when you're in the uh, you're in that class A, mm-hmm. um, a lot of the contractors actually come around the same price range. Mm. Like y- you're you're wondering, well, I get this like railing quote, right? And one is one guy's like five hundred dollars, and the other guy's like three thousand. Mm-hmm. Why, is, you know, when you start going to the high-end flips or the high-end prop, you know, those contractors that understand a lot of things, they're coming in at the same prices. So one of your diversifications was contracting, you're a general contractor. Next one. Um, General contracting and co-living. So co-living kind of was an opportunity um, because when I was building, I, I bought a property around the corner from this one property that I told you about, mm-hmm. the student housing. Right. So around the corner, 
there was a lot and it was a tax detail. It was for sale. Sure. And you could look up what tax details are. I, I knew nothing about it. I understood mm -hmm. I, nothing. And there was this historical barn on the tax detail. And um, you wanted the barn. And no, I actually wanted to knock it down. Uh, but you build, couldn't because it was historical. I wanted to build this mega like I wanted to build this mega like twenty bedroom house for for people to live in. They went to college. Yeah, because okay. I was twenty three, and okay. I was like, okay, We're gonna you know, let me, let me just like, you want to live with your friends, right? Well, let me <laughs> just get more and more right. and more. You know, more. I was thinking rooms, like yeah. cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Mm -hmm. You know, not realizing like, oh my god, that's not the way it goes. Right. Um, and it took me three years. That was my school. So I went to Fordham, mm -hmm. but then I went to the School of Hard Knocks with, with this whole thing, and we bought it for about sixty thousand or seventy thousand, and I I took my financial aid money hmm. when I was when I was a grad student, and I took some of it, put it into that, and, and I'm I sure borrowed your money from my parents. Really parent. happy with that one. I <laughs> borrowed money from my parents. They believed in me. That's good. And they realized like I was doing something that you know, and. Uh, and then when I bought that property, long story short, I got it approved. I went through zoning. I ended up not building this 20 bedroom, whatever complex. I built two beautiful homes because the neighbors were coming to the meetings. Mm. Okay. And they were complaining. Sure. They, they, didn't, want a door, they didn't want a no. dorm next door. No, no. And that was my first experience with. You're like, wait a minute. There's neighbors. Hearings. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hearings and zoning. And I had no idea what was going on. And I had to pay this engineer and I had to pay this attorney. And I didn't even know what the engineer was saying. Right. And actually that hurt me because this engineer was adding so many things that were unnecessary Ugh. that I was just like, yesing everyone to death mm -hmm. and saying, sure, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He added 15 inch perforated pipes underground with dry wells, with like uh, a fence that was required around the entire property and shrubbery that had to go in there. And I didn't really understand it until I looked at the plans and I had to do it. Mm -hmm. Right, because once it's promised in a meeting like that, the town expects you to do that as part of your approval. Yep. Oh dear. And you'll never be able to, to occupy that house yep. or sell it unless yep. you finish it. Yep. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that the town, the, the reason why they also approved, the site is they said no student housing mm. and so wait did that mean you couldn't have students in there or they it couldn't told me be I can't have students in there yeah oh which I think it is illegal but whatever it is well that actually opened up a new door mm -hmm. for me to rethink and pivot and and not like go into a corner and cry about it mm -hmm. um, I said you know what what if I build a really nice house high-end Beautiful kitchen, mm -hmm. and I ask for more. So I don't have the 20 bedrooms, but I have five bedrooms because they were limiting me, or six bedrooms, but they're really, they're really large rooms. I'm going to be the fifth half mm -hmm. of co-living. And that's how it started. That's where Coluxy gave, and, and, um, and, and how long have you been doing co-living? About uh, 10 years. Wow, okay. And that's, just, that's literally just a, a different version of renting. It is a very yeah, different version of renting. Uh, zoning, um, you have to you have to look at your zoning laws, and mm -hmm. um, I feel that zoning is outdated in a lot of towns. Agreed. Um, and I think that there's a redevelopment plan that has to be put into place with townships, but they don't have the money mm. um, to do they it. They don't all have the knowledge. Either. They don't have the knowledge or money. Yeah, and uh, I mean, in in Nutley Township where I live, it says, and I read it in one of the ordinances, you can't walk your pig. Uh, on Franklin Ave. Well, people. I mean, people still I mean, pigs. it's like, well, yeah, people do, but it was, it was, it was me for a different it time. It was me yeah. for a different time, and and co living is not about pigs. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> co, co living is is just not in in, in the zoning laws. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's so outdated, right? And I think some states like California, they've actually added the co living into they had their to, zoning. Right redevelopment plans um so new york is well. because it's such a hot market for it so. right well yeah how many co-living properties single family rentals multi-family rentals what do you have what 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 are we I, looking I at i have a portfolio of probably 20 properties okay yeah at the age of 36 that's, that's great that's beautiful Good job. thank you you started at nothing at 22 yeah and I, you got I a worked. whole way to go i have a whole way to go and I, you're still going to do flips 
I still do flips. Okay, but um, no one else should do them, just you. <laughs> That's not what he said. That's not what he said. He, he totally said, said do he doesn't said, want people to do flips if they don't have that construction knowledge. Because he's saying you're actually getting yourself into a whole learn. new world. You have to be careful. Somewhere. You have to be careful and you have to know the basics. And yes, you do have to learn somewhere. And I do believe in at least buying a property. Right. Um, but don't think that maybe flipping is the way to go. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to think of every avenue. And in real estate, there are so many avenues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not just flipping. There's so many ways of making money. So where do you think money is to be made in real estate right now? That's a great question. Because we, no. we know it's not flipping. I mean, it, it really depends on where, where you're buying. It depends on what you're buying. It depends on the property. Um, there's a lot of people that get into real estate and lose a lot of money. But is co-living the place to make money now in real co estate? I mean, there's some properties that I buy and I, I understand that co-living won't work mm -hmm. in that property. So I do own multifamilies mm -hmm. and I have commercial, mm -hmm. you know, um, so I'm, I'm diversified in that. Um, and I would say that the success comes from understanding each and every property. So but the, you still think real estate is where you should be making your money. I absolutely, a thousand percent, think real estate is how you'll be able to survive in this world and retire. Thanks for watching this episode. Now don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And we'll see you next time.